We're rolling edge coat on the edge of our countertop. Usually a single coat is adequate on almost any surface unless it's really open porous wood like cut MDF. And in that case, all I do is I let my first thin, thin layer just dry after I really work it in and I take all the excess off. And then I'll just lightly block sand it with a foam sanding block and then I'll roll another coat right on. And you'll really see how much that'll smooth it out, seal up your edges. Now, even if it runs a little thin on the edge, you don't see any major break in color there. mix three minutes in your initial container. At that point, switch containers, switch sticks as well, then add your pigment and mix for another three minutes. Now that we're finished up on our two gallon mix, I'm gonna go ahead and pour it. Make sure you don't pour it all out on one end of the countertop or the other. Make sure you do somewhat distribute it to where it's going. Um, the more accurately you put it in place by pouring, the less work you have to do with a roller. Sounds simple, but you couldn't, wouldn't believe how many times people, there'll be a sink in the middle of the countertop with very little room in front and behind and they'll dump all the product to one side and then they have to try to figure out how to get that product off of this and transfer half of it to the other side. Now I generally apply everything using a foam roller. It's the only true lint-free roller in my opinion as a foam roller and it really gauges the product nicely and makes applying epoxy very simple and smooth. If you notice, I'm covering the majority of the top of the countertop, but I'm stopping just short of the edge. And prior to going over the edge with a ton of product or all the product, I'm going to take a wet roller with just a little epoxy on it, roll those edges nice and thoroughly, and that's gonna really break surface tension and allow the product to more evenly and consistently flow over that edge. On your countertop, remember, you could mix this, instead of mixing this accent powder into epoxy, you could mix this accent color into alcohol and spray it if you want a more subdued and, and really fine and faded look. If you want it to be a little more contrasted, you can do what I'm about to do. This has all been mixed already. If you notice, I poured a lot more of the accent color down to one end. I'm going to start from one end of the countertop and most likely pull the majority of my colors down this way so I can get somewhat of a patinaed dripping effect on this. What I'm gonna try to do, scrape these cups out. I'm combining all of them into a single cup for a dirty pour. If you notice the top right now, it looks kind of decent, um, but you can see it's a little bit rough looking and that's all little air bubbles, especially the fact that we mixed all uh, metallic powders, um, which is mica powder that definitely adds to that really fine bubbled effect. So I'm gonna torch that now because I have finished manipulating the product. I don't need to spread anything, mix anything, but this will further the um, curing process. So I wouldn't have a lot more time to actually manipulate this once I get it hotter here with the torch. But because I believe I'm done with my work, I'm gonna move on and torch it. And you should start seeing a really smooth, nice look come out of this. Now, if you notice, I have very direct um, contact with the flame to the countertop. Very direct, but I'm moving at a speed to where I don't see anything smoking. And you seriously, you will see people actually slow down sometimes and they'll let their countertop actually smoke, not realizing they are burning their countertop. So you don't want to create a burned effect.
This is just the combination of all our accent colors all poured together.